हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू अदमी एकेडमी यूट्यूब क्लासेस सो नाउ टुडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट हिस्टोरिकल स्कूल ऑफ जुरिस्पूडेंस एज वेल एज सोशोलॉजिकल स्कूल ऑफ जुरिस्पूडेंस इन अर्लियर क्लासेस वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट एनालिटिकल स्कूल ऑफ जुरिस्पूडेंस सो लेट स्टार्ट हिस्टोरिकल स्कूल ऑफ जुरिस्पूडेंस इंट्रोडक्शन लॉ इज फाउंड नॉट मेड लॉ डेवलप्स फ्रॉम ईजी ग्राफ्स Legal relation in primitive society is extended to complex modern society. It's a very famous line: "Law is found, not made." What does it mean? It means that law is made from the customs and traditions which have been prevalent in the past. Law develops from easy grasp. Legal relation in primitive society is extended to complex modern society. Let us take an example. Let us. Give a timeline. For example, seventeen hundred, eighteen hundred, then nineteen hundred, then two thousand. Here, the society was very simple. In eighteen hundred, industrialization was started. In nineteen hundred, col it was a period of colonization, and two thousand. is what in what we have complex modern society so we can see that law was earlier simple then it became complex as it moved in present law is not of universal validity or application everyone develops own legal habit and understanding learning from the past takes us to the future it is the very basic philosophy of historical school of jurisprudence is that we have to learn from the past and have do not have to repeat the mistakes in the present as well as in the future this is what historical school of jurisprudence mainly means proponents of historical school savigny savigny is a very famous propounder he is also considered as the father of historical school of jurisprudence he gave a very famous theory which is theory of volkaist which means common spirit of people what does common spirit of people mean common spirit of people means that it is not that the sovereign makes law and we have to follow as it is it is for the people to see whether the law is adequate that it is is it according to the needs of the present society or is society benefited by that law or not so the common people also have the role in making of law is what this volkaist theory says and it also says that it's not that just any law which has been made is correct it should have some legal structure behind it the process of law making should have legal structure it means that it should pass through various stages of development before getting enacted so by that citizens will have a chance that if the law is not adequate or if the law has some loopholes or if the law is totally wrong then they they can ask the sovereign or the law making body to change it if they know the process of change and the process of development of law now the next propounder which we will be discussing is henry main henry main gave the stages of development or division of society then we have montesquieu first one to talk about this school that law and society should be together and then pushta neither government or individual make law both have to be together so we will be seeing what pushta has told he has told that analytical school focuses on sovereign and sociological school focuses on society so pushta has told that neither government that is neither the state 
nor the individual can alone make a law. They have to work combinedly in order to make a law. So this is what Pushta theory tells us. Montesquieu, his book is Spirit de Lois, which means Spirit of the Law. According to him, it is irrelevant to discuss whether the law is good or bad because the law depends on social, political and environmental conditions prevailing in the society. Spirit of the law. Its literal meaning is spirit of the law. So it's irrelevant to discuss whether the law is good or bad because whenever a law is made, it is made by seeing into the social conditions or the political conditions or the environmental conditions which are prevailing in the atmosphere and environment right currently. So this is what Montesquieu has to tell. Let us take some examples related to the various conditions which Montesquieu has told in his definition. Social condition. For example, we can take an example of widow remarriage. So when the society was primitive society, then it was considered that it is not necessary that widow should get remarried because they considered that widow, if a, if a woman becomes widow, then she has to jump into the pyre of the burning husband so as to get salvation. And But this does not hold true now because the law has progressed and the society has also progressed. Society and law should be at the same footing. Law and society should be at the same level. So at that time, widow remarriage would have been considered an absurd idea, but it is not so now. Today, if somebody, if some legislature or some uh, lawmaking body makes a law, and tomorrow morning if we wake up and we see a law which penalizes widow remarriage, then would you think the society would accept that? No, because the society has progressed very well compared to the primitive society. Then, next example we can take of political condition. Political situation. Let us take an example like uh, recently elections have been held. So if a party does some mistake, he or she will not be, the, that party will not win because of the, it, it is not able to be that much capable as the other parties are. So by this they will learn that in future we have to avoid these mistakes in order to win. So these are the political situations which the politicians as well as the people who are giving vote have to study in order to be a better be uh, give a better role in the making of politicians environmental conditions Why do you think have the Environment Protection, Environmental Protection Act enacted and why do you think uh, India is signing various conventions and treaties in order to regulate the ozone layer depletion as well as the other environmental issues which are arising? It is because in the earliest primitive society, primitive society used to depend on agriculture and did, did not have uh, very much uh, opportunities for industrialization or colonization but as the society progressed there is establishment of huge number of industries and urbanization is at a very fast stage progressing so that's why the pollution is, is increasing so therefore it's the need of the society that they should have better air quality better water drinking water and with this basic necessities and amenities so for this, Environmental Protection Act and other laws have been enacted in order to take care of the prevalent social conditions. So these are the three examples which are related to 
to a concept that it is not relevant that to see whether a law is a good or bad it just makes no difference because the law is made according to the prevalent conditions and thus the law is born his conclusion was that the law is the creation of climate local situation accident or impulsion it has given social conditions political conditions and environmental conditions but he is also stated about the climatic conditions associated local situations associated and accident or imposures he was of the view that law must change according to the needs of the society for example let us take an example recently there uh, is a very recently newspapers have a very heated topic which is artificial intelligence so should artificial intelligence be a subject matter of debate in the present scenario of course yes because artificial intelligence has made our lives very much easier but at the same time it has given us many problems also because of the increasing cases of online fraud and other cases which are leading to the demerits and the, the loss to the persons who are being are jumping into the field of artificial intelligence so it's a need of the society that they study the the problems which are associated with the artificial intelligence and the future generations should get a, a, an idea as to why the law has been enacted they should get the idea that in the past these were the conditions by which it was needed that the law should be there to regulate artificial intelligence example we can take of artificial intelligence he did not believe in any theory or philosophy of the relation between law and society this suggestion was that the law should answer the needs of the place and should change according to time place and needs of people so the key word here is change he meant that the law should change according to the needs of the society if if a uh, society a needs different law then the law should be different for that society and similarly if the society b is on the different part of development then the law should be different for that society then this the second author is sevigny his books are law of position history of roman law system of modern roman law vocation on our times for legislation and jurisprudence he is considered as founder of historical jurisprudence so the founder of historical jurisprudence, jurisprudence is sevigny who is a very famous author and the key word to remember this is his books are roman law Savigny was a very uh, Savigny was very influenced by Roman law so therefore his books have the the uh, mention of Roman law his emphasis is the muddled and outmoded nature of legal system was usually due to failure to understand its history and evolution according to Savigny it is very essential to understand the history of the law that why the law has come into picture let us take an example of the law which had not be which had been there in the past but had been eradicated in the present that is let us take the example of sati pratha which was there in the past but now it is not practiced and it is a pen it is a offense if you uh, practice sati pratha so it is very necessary according to sevigny to study the law as a whole so we have to study its history as well as the present conditions as well as how the law will be in the future for example uh, if the future generation think that artificial intel why the law of artificial intelligence has been made then they will understand that it was the need of the present past society that the law had to be enacted 
because of the cases which were being overflowed in the society. He is regarded as Darwinian before Darwin and sociologist before sociologist. So you might be thinking that we are studying historical school of jurisprudence that how the word sociologist has come and why he is considered sociologist before sociologist. The answer to this question is very simple. He is considered sociologist before sociologist even if he was not a sociologist at all because he, he gave the idea that law and society should be uh, studied together in order to make a good law. So that is why he is called sociologist before sociologist because of his uh, very evolutive thinking. His most famous theory in historical jurisprudence is theory of Volkaist, which suggests the following. So in earlier class, I have told you the story of Volkaist is a very famous theory. So now we will be studying the points under the theory of Volkaist, which have been propounded by Savigny. Law is not something which can be made or alters arbitrarily by lawmakers. So the key here, word here is arbitrariness. So law is not something which the sovereign has made and it can at any time according to his will change without any reason the law which is prevalent. So the arbitrariness of sovereign is not to be considered according to Savigny. Law of the nation is not the product of reason or command or will of the sovereign but the instinctive sense of right possessed by every race or community. This means that he is focusing here on sustainable development. It means that we don't just have to look in the needs of the present society. We have to take the look at the needs of the present as well as future society. So in order to make a law, we have to look on, on in the all the generations which will be there in present and in the future. Law as such is found not made. It is found in popular faith, common convictions, customs, traits, habits and traditions. This is the basic idea of what historical school of jurisprudence has to say and the same has been propounded by Montesquieu. So, Savigny has taken further the idea of Montesquieu that law, law is found, it is not made. Like the language, the manners and the constitution of a nation, all laws are exclusively determined by the nation's peculiar character, which is otherwise called the Volkaist or spirit of the people. So, whenever you go to any country, you are told that this is how Indians behave. Or whenever Americans or any other country people come to our country, we are told that this is how Americans behave. We are not told that this is how Narendra Modi behaves or this is how the Prime Minister of that country behaves. So the nation is, identity is its people. So how the people behave is how the nation behaves. So we have to study the spirit of the people that what people want because people are the sovereign. They are the main part of the society. Law cannot be universal or general in character. It is always peculiar and particular. According to him, law cannot be universal. This means that if we consider this is a country which have society A, which has society B, let us consider this as a continent. Which has society A, society B, society C and society D. So the law which will be there in society A or let us suppose in country A will be different from what the law will be in society B because the conditions will be different in all together in the different countries. So law cannot be universal. 
it has to change with the change of society. Savigny always favored customary law over legislations. This I have told you in previous class that there was a very heated debate between analytical school as well as historical school related to customs. Analytical school has said that customs are not a valid source of law, whereas in uh, historical school of jurisprudence, Savigny has considered custom as a valid source of law. So, Savigny always favored customs law over legislations. He believed in unbreakable continuity of law from the past to the present and future also. Sir Henry May So he has given some written some books. The first book of Maine, Ancient Law, was published in 1861. He also wrote Village Communities in 1871, Early History of Institutions in 1875, and Dissertations of Early Law and Custom in 1883. So the keyword which we can uh, highlight in order to remember the books written by Sir Henry Maine would be Ancient or early. So, main describes the development of law in four stages. First, second, third and fourth stage. First stage, rules. rulers are believed to be acting under divine inspiration and the laws are made on the commands of the rulers. For example, Themistimus of ancient Greek. The judgment of the king was considered the judgment of the god. And the words spoken by the king was considered to be words directly given from the God. So in this theory, the Greeks and Romans emphasized that the kings are the sovereign. And whatever king told us, we have to follow it as it is, according to what the king has told us. But in this, the, he, they also considered that the words of the king are directly given from what God has wanted us to do. So the king is actually what God has told us to do. Second stage, then the commands of king converted into customary laws. In the second stage, first stage, king as sovereign. Second stage, priest command as customs. So in the second stage, whatever the priest commands the society to do, that became the customary law or the traditions which will be followed by the generations. Then comes the third stage, the knowledge and administration of customs goes into the hands of minority. In the third stage, the elite class came into picture. So whatever the elite class told, the elite class or the minority class, whatever it told to the common men, they have to follow it. So this is the stage of development, third stage of development. Then fourth stage. In the fourth and last stage, the law is codified and formulated. Fourth stage, codification of law. Then the, there was a need felt that the law should not only be a customary law, it should actually be codified in order to have a written law which is free from all biasness. So this is the stage where the codification of law took place. Henry May also gave the division of society. Static and progressive society. First is static society and second is progressive society. So what this static society means? Society which does not progress and develop the legal structure after the fourth stage of development of law are static society. Static societies don't progress beyond the era of courts. So we have studied the four stages of development. First, second, third and fourth. 
so the law which does not progress after the fourth stage of development is a static society what does it mean in the fourth stage the law becomes codified and if the society considers that whenever the law has become codified they don't have to point out that there are any loopholes or anything which is not according to them they don't have the right to amend that to have that law amended or to say anything against that law then it means the society is a static society so where the law has come to an end on the first fourth stage is static society then progressive society societies which go on progressing after the fourth stage of development of law are progressive societies they develop their laws with the help of these instruments so what are progressive societies progressive societies are opposite to static societies it means that after the fourth stage of de of uh, development fourth stage of development if the society if the law which is codified can be changed in future according because of the formal legal structure or system which the lawmakers have given to the people then that society is considered as a progressive society because in that society if the individuals feel that the law should be changed or law should be amended then they have a legal structure or they have they know the power power uh, bifurcation or power stages so that they can approach the sovereign or the lawmakers and ask them to change the law so this is what is progressive society then fourth propounder is george friedrich pushta the main concept of pushta's ideas was that neither the people nor the state alone can make or formulate laws both state and individual are the sources of law so what does analytical school states analytical school states that sovereign is the source of law and in sociological school states that in historical school considers society also so here this is what austin has told and in historical school this is what mean and montesquieu Savigny and Montesquieu have told. It means that according to George Friedrich Pushta, both state and individuals have equal role in making of law. So he does not support. analytical school as well as he does not only support historical school he says that both state and individuals should work together in order to make a law his ideas mainly focused on the situation where conflict arises between general will and individual will now let us consider a case where society as well as sovereign both make a law so in this case the general will there will be a general will of individuals living in the society and there will be an individual will of the sovereign both will get clashed because the sovereign will think that the law should be like should be according to him and the society will think that the law should be according to their needs so there will be a clash or conflict of interest between both the wills so in this case what will with whose will will prevail whether the will of the sovereign or whether the will of the society is the question so the answer to this question pushta gave it he told it that the both the wills will work together and no will will dominate over the other will so both the wills have equal stay 
and equal say and both the wills will come to a common conclusion. His ideas mainly focus on a situation where conflict arises between general will, which will be of society, and individual will, will be that of state. So both coordinate. In the conflict between general will and individual will, the state came into existence and finds out the midway to resolve the conflict. Sociological School of Jurisprudence Contents of this template. Now, let us look into the third school. We have studied analytical school in detail. Next, we have studied historical school in detail. And now, we will be studying sociological school in detail. The main subject matter of sociology is society. Sociology is the study of society, human behavior, and social changes. Now, let us take some examples related to the sociological school. Let us take an example. Is abatement to society a punishable offense? Yes, of course. But consider that the person who, who is uh, committing suicide, he is very low. He's, he's, he's feeling very low. And if he by chance is surviving, if, and if the attempt which he has made to commit suicide is not fruitful, then should he be punished or kept behind the bars because he has attempted to suicide. This is not this is not correct because uh, how what will that individual think and how will the other society members get benefited according to this? So this is a debate uh, on this topic. Similarly, there are other concepts also which are prevalent in the society. So sociological school studies the society, human behavior, and social changes. The sociological school of jurisprudence advocates that the law and society are related to each other. This, this school argues that the law is a social phenomenon because it has major impact on society. So uh, a crime can be considered a crime but there can be gravity different gravities of crime for example uh, a crime like rape can be considered uh, only a crime but a crime like gang rape can be considered as a heinous crime so this the law is based on the social phenomena which is prevalent in the society so let us take an exa another example like juvenile justice so uh, when the case arrived in 2000, near 2000, so uh, should juvenile be exempted from giving the punishment? It is a debate because some people say that juveniles are cons should be considered as uh, adults because of the society's progress. Because the society is progressing so fast, in the 10 years, the individual which has become, which has... Uh, attained at the age of 10 has a mental development of age of 17 years so a juvenile should not be considered juvenile just because of his age but because of the acts which he is doing in that age is what is to be looked into according to some persons in society proponents of sociological jurisprudence and rich founded living law with society he considers law as an living organism. It means that law grows with society. The society feeds the law. Roscoe found social engineering, Jukit social solidarity and interdependence of man, erring social utilitarianism. Now we will study Ehrlich which is the founder of sociological school. According to him, the evolution of law is very dynamic and spontaneous. He believed that the center of gravity of all legal development is not in legislations or judicial decisions, but in society itself. The interrelationship of people is what is important in law. So he considers law to be very dynamic. What does it mean? It means that 
In a society, let us consider there is a society A and there are individuals 1, individual 2 and n number of individuals. So, the n number of individuals will have n number of egos. So, so these individuals ego will clash with each other. So, in order that the egos of the individuals are satisfied and they work coherently, the law is needed. So, evolution of law is very dynamic. I have given an example where a plane crash on an island. So when a plane crashes in an island, there are no survival uh, amenities which are present with the persons. So they try to force each other to and they try to apply force on each other and take as much as possible from the other persons. So this is how society is formed because one group of people will think that we should uh, apply force and rob the things from other people and other pe persons will think that we should actually distribute equally the materials which are left so the with the thinking of society with the different thinking of people the society becomes dynamic and thus to control the dynamicity of society a law is needed he believed that the incentive gravity of for such law to arise some legal control of law is necessary for regulation then next propounder of sociological school is jirgit he was a huge believer of social solidarity which contends the independence of men which eat other and grow together is necessary to make a society so what does social solidarity means it means interdependence of men so this is not a concept which has come in the present only it was a concept which has been followed by the past generations as well so when we take a look to the past or primitive society we come into we know that there was a system which was very prevalent at those times which was called barter system what, what was actually about the system that uh, there were many professions which people used to follow at those times. Some were agriculturists, some were potter, some used to cultivate rice, some used to make clothes. So it's not that a person will only leave, uh, need vegetables to sustain his life. He will also need fruits, he would also need rice, ghee, milk products, etc. So when he cultivates vegetables, uh, wheat then in, he can sell that wheel wheat and he can get rice in return so this is what was exchange of commodities between two set of group of people is what was barter system actually was so at that time also there was interdependence of men on each other similarly in the present condition or in the modern society also we follow the currency system why because whenever we we want we not only want uh, one thing we want different things to sustain our life for example we want books we want um, eatables we want water so we exchange those with currency in order to fulfill all our needs so this this um, us, uh, only a single individual is not able to do they are dependent on each other it is not possible for any person to have everything all by himself. He has to depend on others for their needs. The only reason law its development of social solidarity, he was a believer of less fair state where there is less intervention of government in the economy and more focus on the development of every citizen. So he believes that, let us consider a society 1, society 2, society 3, society 4, society 5 and society N. So these all are interacting with each other. So let us consider this society, these societies have been differentiated on the basis of religion. So society A follows. Hindu religion, society B follows Muslim religion, society C follows Christian religion, 
when society defollows Sikh religion and so on. So there might be clashes or conflicts between the ideas and ideologies of different societies in this case. So, so according to Dugit, the interdependence of men should be that that the law should not be needed. It means that all people should harmonize and all should, people should live together in a very sophisticated way so that law is not needed. They all should be governed all by themselves which is a utopian idea. Law is obeyed. So what does laissez faire mean? Laissez faire is totally opposite Militant, military state. A military state is a state which is controlled by the military or the police. But a laissez faire state is the state in which the people control the society and the needs of the people are seen and are taken into consideration. Law is obeyed not by virtue of any higher principles but because men have to live as members of society. This is a very famous or very practical point that we do not follow law because we are supposed to follow or because it has very high principles or because some authority has told us to follow law. We follow law so as we are considered better members in the society. It means that the other people should consider us better and should not consider us uh, 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 not according to the conditions which are there in the society. For example, let us consider inter-caste marriage. What does inter-caste, does inter-caste marriage happen in the modern society? Of course, yes. Now it is the era in which the intercaste marriages are happening. So why do you think in earlier times the people or the grandparents or the family members do not were not so uh, were didn't uh, wanted that intercaste marriages should happen in their family because they felt that if they have to tell to other people of the same community that we are not getting a suitable bride or groom in our society, in community then they will it will lead to the degradation of their reputation so in order to save their reputation oh, intercaste marriages were not allowed in earlier times but now the trend has changed and in modern society we can see many intercaste marriages so we are the people at that time used to fear about their reputation as the members of the society it's what Dugit wanted to tell us. Sovereignty is meaningless because it is related to more intentions of government. As Dugit was, uh, is associated with sociological school of jurisprudence, he will obviously consider society or the will of the people to be more dominating than sovereignty. He will give more importance to the will of the people. So here, that is why he has considered sovereignty to be meaningless. Roscoe Pound, the main objective of law is to harmonize the society. So he, dis he is uh, different in views related uh, in comparison to Jugit because Jugit considers that interdependence of men should reach to a level so as to have a so utopian idea but according to Roscoe Pound it is not needed that we should have a society in which it is able to regulate itself by its own it should only be able to harmonize that means it should be able to work efficiently it is not needed that it should work in an ideal situation this is the difference between the views of Jirgit as well uh, compared to Roscoe Pound Nanosco Pound believed in harmonization of society various 
Do you get believed in utopian society? Laws and ordering of conduct so as to make good of existence and the means of satisfying claims go round as far as possible with least waste. This is the principle of sustainable development. That we should look into the needs of future generations also without compromising the needs of the present generation. Law is rules, principles, conceptions and conducts. What is law? A way a rule is made. The people follow certain rule, then the rule becomes principle in some period of time. Then that principle only becomes the conception which people engrave in their mind. And that conception then later becomes their conduct into, into, and becomes so practical that they uh, follow it subconsciously in their mind. So this is what law is. So law is rule, principle, conceptions as well as conduct. Individuals in society prioritize their self-interest and wish that they to be preferred over theirs. This sometimes lead to conflict in society. So the society, in a society there are many individuals. Let us take an example of our colony only. There might be some people who earn better than us and there might be, there will be some people who earn less than us who are persons who have better home than us and a persons who have smaller or lesser facilities than us. So this can lead to jealousy between individuals. So in order to look into the, those feelings, we need interdependence, we need to harmonize the society. So these feelings are natural and practical, which can lead to conflict but to avoid conflict, we need to harmonize the society, is what the famous author Roscoe Pound has to tell. The main idea of Pound is about social engineering, which contends that the use of centralized planning in an attempt to manage social change and regulate the future development and behavior of a society. For the matter of social engineering, these general postulates, these following subjects need to be properly attained. So we have discussed in our earlier classes that Roscoe Pound has given a very famous theory of social engineering. It means that the society, when law is made, it is made in phases and the law should have central planning. planning. It means that individuals who do not find the law to be proper can approach to a higher level in order to get a better law or in order to amend that law. So they should know about the centralized planning structure or they should know about the legal structure of law is what Roscoe Pounds wanted to say and he has given very famous jewel postulates but you might have, when we were discussing about the expected questions uh, I, uh, there was one question related to who has given dual correlatives. So what there is a difference between dual postulates as well as dual correlatives. So don't get confused between the two. Dual postulates have been given by Roscoe Pound and Hopefield have given dual correlatives. So the five general postulates which Roscoe Pound has given is now shown in the next slide. General postulates of Pound. People must be able to assume that others will not be intentionally aggressive. Criminal law. Criminal law focuses on actus rea as well as mens rea. It means that not only guilty intention, guilty act, but guilty intention is also needed to convict a person. So. By this, we have IPC, CRPC and Indian Evidence Act. These three acts looked into 
the fact that if persons are become aggressive to other then this law will take care of those persons people must be able to assume that they can control things that they have discovered related created or legitimately acquired which is called law of patents so let us assume that uh, today if we are writing a music or we are writing some stanzas of music or if we are writing some poetry and the next day or you know a couple of days there is a news which is heard that some people are printing or publishing publishing that book or that poetry which we have written so it is is it uh, legal is it is not legal so in order to protect our word work or the originality of our work we have law of patents third people must be able to assume that other people will honor reasonable expectations which they create and understanding which they give which is law of contracts so let us assume that there is a contract between party a and party b a party a has to perform in a music concert in the in the family of party b so according to the contract the party a will uh, get the remuneration after the performance so in 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 this contract party a has performed his part that that is he has uh, performed in the music concert but the party b has not given the remuneration for the same it means that party b has not performed his part so in this case the law of contract will come into picture and party b have to pay compensation as well as remuneration to party a people must be able to assume that other people will act with due care not to create unreasonable risk of injury to others just law of torts law of tort basically means protecting individuals from the civil wrong so whenever a person steps out of home he should not fear that uh, someone might snatch away his chain or someone might uh, just uh, beat him without any reason so this is how he is protected people must be able to assume that other people will control things which they are maintain on their land and which are like to scale and cause damage which is a very famous principle strict liability principle or absolute liability it means that the party who has committed uh, of committed and is has been negligent has to face consequences uh, without any uh, he sh- he will not give, be given any remedy regarding that it is a very famous there is a very famous case of bhopal gas tragedy in which methyl isocyanate got leaked and the persons because the, and they had to give a very large remuneration to the persons affected because it was believed that it was the responsibility of the company that they look into the uh, release of any poisonous gases and they take care of that it it is not a excuse that they, they did not knew about that incident we can take another example let us consider consider this a huge water tank on a farm and nearby the residents live so when there is a leak in that water tank the lands and the houses of other residents will also get submerged so uh, this is also related to strict liability principle because we know that a water tank is can get leaked so we have to avoid that so this is one example another example we can take in a dangerous breed dog if it at any home we find a dangerous breed dog which can bite us or which has actually bitten us then uh, in that case the owner of that dog will be responsible because he knew that he is having a dangerous dog with him which can actually cause a huge damage to other person so it is the responsibility of the owner to take into the consideration that he always ties him properly 
and even if he has tied it and then also the dog is has bitten another person then also the owner will be responsible because he has to he he knows that he has a dangerous dog and that's the sole reason that he is responsible for the act so in this class we have studied about historical school as well as sociological school and in the previous class we have studied about analytical school in the next class we will study about natural school of jurisprudence in detail so till then revise and stay tuned bye